Alright there folks, Pemo here. Right, as promised it's time for me to have a go at the Vatanos rattle ring repair procedure. I'm following the instructions from Bezian Systems and I'm going to be using my laptop which is just behind me here, the squirrels above my head and a little bit of measuring tools just to make sure we get this right. I'm going to try and do it on a bench so it's all nice and in the light and I will say that I have taken the Vanos completely apart and cleaned it before this process. So this is the reassembly of the Vanos with the ceiling ring, the rattle ring, showing you how to do the axial play and make sure the tolerance is correct, provided we don't cock this up. So I'm going to just turn the camera around so you can see the bench and then we'll get started. Right, okay, so here we have all the different Vanos bits. So we've got the Vanos housing at the back here, which is the internal part of the piston. We have the two halves of the piston itself the back plate and the actual piston, which is here. This is where the ceiling ring and the Viton ring is gonna go. And the purpose for that is so that it can seal inside this bore effectively when it's in operation. The piston itself is taking lots of parts to assemble. This is the gearing for the piston. This is actually an oil control valve that goes up in here. And then we just have a couple of bolts for the casing, the uh, outer case bolts and the Vanos oil feed line bolt. Now this is the two different packages from Bijan. So we've got the seal repair kit, if you can get that there, and the rattle repair kit. Now basically the seal repair is fairly obvious. If any of you have read, which I'm sure you have, the seals fail, they go dry and they shrink down in size. The piston can't seal as well in the bore and the Vanos can't work correctly. The seals, we're going to do that at the end. I'm going to do the rattle repair kit first. Now this consists of a ring, just a metal ring. And that ring's thickness is the difference that the rattle makes. Basically we're trying to avoid the axial play and the in and out play from the... If I just tear this apart slowly. From this ring that sits inside. What we're going to do is we're going to replace this ring basically for another ring that's a bit thicker, I believe. These different parts are all parts of the, the bearing system itself. So I want to take these off in order and keep them in order. Give them just all a wipe up. I know I'm going to replace the ring, but I'm doing that so I can measure it. One of the bearings, a sort of central disc that spins on these bearings. Spacer. And then the final sort of core plug. And this is all held together by a left hand threaded bolt. So we want to go lefty tighty righty loosey so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this ring basically so the first thing i want to do is i want to measure that ring's thickness using a mic so we're looking at 7.4 and a half mil there about the same there and the same there so at least it's worn flat this ring but 7.4 and a half mil this one from Bijan, they make a point of saying that it has BS stamped in the side of the, the actual ring itself, which will confirm there's the BS on the side, if you can make that out on camera. And this one's thickness is less, so it's 7.2, that's interesting. Okay, so what they're doing is making the ring smaller to accommodate for the wear on the rest of the parts, I would assume. 7.267 in thickness. So we'll measure that up. We've got that measured in thickness now. So that's quite interesting. I was expecting the Bijan one to be bigger, but it's actually smaller. There you are. So this is going to replace that ring there. Let's, let's pop it in place now. So this is the bit where I'm going to use a bit of the manual. This is the rattle procedure, just copied as a PDF from their website. Go and see Bijan Systems' website for this information. The first part is about testing for play and then actually removing the component parts. So this is a rundown here of the parts in order as they go in. And they talk about a special socket you need for this. You just need to take a socket and cut the end off it like so, so it's nice and flat at the end. The problem is this nut is so shallow, you need something extremely flat that will engage with the nut well so you can undo it properly or you just chew the head in the nut. So there we go. We'll just lay that out as bees and have. Now we'll pop the new one in, take the old one out. And we'll start to reassemble. So this is the piston bearing here, or the hole. And I want to place the first washer in the opposite way around. I'm going to put it from the way that it originally was. You can tell where the wear pattern has been from the bearing. So I'm going to flip it because you can put it either way. So make sure that's in nice and flat. And then we put the new bearing outer ring in. Make sure that's flat as well. It's really important that they're flat inside of here. Now I've got to take the piston and remount them. 
the bottom thrust roller bearing has to go in and there are two ways round that has to go it has to go this way round just for reference not that way I want to just lay that down let it drop in there she goes and now the centre washer needs to go in the washer can be incited, inserted in either orientation so again I'm going to use the surface which I believe to be the worn one up this time try and tighten it up some more that goes in and then we install the spline shaft mounting bolt left handed thread T30 Torx bit socket quarter inch quarter inch ratchet 8 newton meters left hand thread doesn't mention any thread lock or anything like that so I'm not going to use any or shall I? Will I change that opinion? Will I put a dot of thread lock? I'm going to try a dot of thread lock. If you don't agree with me, I shall take it apart again. I don't see why thread lock's a bad idea. Tiny blob. So eight newton meters is just hand tight. Just nip it up. So remember, lefty Lucy. Give it a little nip. What you're doing is you're going into the piston. So I would just hold the piston on this occasion. Get a decent enough torque in there. There we are. Right, and now I want to use the vise just to make sure it's absolutely correct. Right, now we don't want to just bang it in the vise. It tells you to use vise jaws. You can use whatever you want to use to protect the piston and then the associated body when you come to clamp it later on. Uh, that's not my responsibility. I'll leave that up to you to choose. But basically you want to put it in your vise in something nice and tight, which isn't going to destroy the outside of the thing itself. So what have we got? I can use for that. Bear with me just a second, I'll find something. Okay, so the next step is this next bearing washer and it wants to go this way up again, according to the pictures there. And then the next washer on top of him. Again, I'm putting the worn side up, away from the bearing. And then finally, it's going to be the little cap. So install piston, bolt and cap. Counter, hold the piston and tighten the bolt and cap. Only hand tighten, it says. This is regular right tighty lefty loosey. So this is where you need your special socket. So this we just give a little tweak to. Pop it out of the vise. Oh, I've just used a couple of bits of rubber hose, rubber coolant pipe. And we now have the assembled piston. All I've been reading there, what I've been reading about is that if the, it says that if the shaft has any play, then tightening is necessary, which this has no play whatsoever. And no in and out. It's absolutely rock solid. Although I can turn it with a little resistance. Okay, now it says here, bearing tightening adjustment. Any level of resistance preload in the spline shaft rotation indicates no axial play and is considered an optimal fit. I would say with that little bit of turning that I can do there, that would indicate what it's describing to me. So I don't have to adjust this. Basically the process for adjusting it is taking it out, taking the ring itself and the center washer that the two bearings run on and sanding them on a very flat piece of, piece of glass with a bit of uh, wet and dry sandpaper, 400 grade, and then putting it back together and replaying with it until it can move. It needs to move, but it doesn't. If it's bound, then you're in trouble. If it is bound, take it apart, sand down the two internal parts. This one I've been lucky enough to find is absolutely rock solid. So I'm gonna go ahead now and put the seals in the outside and then we'll assemble it in the piston body, but I need to do a bit of work on them first. Okay, so once you're happy with your piston fit and you're happy with the amount of play that you've got, you basically need to take the whole damn thing apart again and you've got to assemble it in the actual piston body itself. This is so that you've got the whole thing actually put together as one unit ready to go in the, uh, in the housing. I've had to clean up the interior of this housing because I grip blasted the inside of it so I've just smoothed the surface off a little bit. Now we'll grab the seals. Now it's really warm today so I'm hoping this Teflon seal doesn't have to be stretched that much. We take the first o-ring, put him in the groove and it goes on at quite detail of making sure that you don't twist the o-ring as it goes into the groove. What you want to do is get it in there and check to see there's actually a mould line on the outside of this o-ring. It makes it quite easy to see. You won't be able to make this out on camera, but you'll see what I mean if you've ever got a kit in front of you. Uh, and it has to sit flat inside that surface. I'm not 100% happy with that. It was, seems to be wobbling a little bit in the channel. I'm not putting any force on this. I'm just running it inside the ring just to make sure it's sitting in there straight, which I'm pretty happy it is. Then the fun part, apparently this is quite difficult. So grab the ring around the outside, slip it into where the O-ring is and then pull it up and over here. 
I'm just making sure it's in the groove the whole way around. It's actually not far away. Right, now stretch it a bit that way. I'm going to try and go the other way now. There she goes, she's in. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just trying to straighten it up a little bit. Apply a coat of assembly lubricant to Vanos cylinder wall. So we want a little bit on the inside of there. And we want a little bit around the seal. Press in the helical gear shaft at 30 degree angle and then rotate the piston into the cylinder. Here we go. So what we're supposed to do from what I read with that is go in at about a year of an angle and then rotate the piston down and in. Okay. Okay, and she's out. So next time we do it, it should be a little bit easier. There she goes, she's in again. Okay, we'll have it back out again. It's still binding pretty hard. <coughs> Turn the piston around again. Each time it goes in a bit easier. So we're going to leave it a few minutes. It says leave it for two minutes in that second stage there. So we'll now pull it out one more time. She's getting freer and freer each time. So, can we rotate the piston yet? Not really, it still binds quite a lot. It's still pretty tight going in. I think we should give it another little uh, oil up. I'm fairly happy with that, that's uh, some nice movement there. Okay, so we're going to do the bolts up now. Five little bolts. Do them up in a crisscross pattern. Okay, and that's basically it. Now we just reassemble the oil pressure piston with its associated spring, a couple of little blanking, blanking bolts. The spring clips around an indent in the top of this piston. And the spring is going to go down towards the bottom of the hole, but we want some lube in there first. Just set him in. This is basically a valve. The solenoid acts upon. We can then put in our two little cover bolts back here. Our banjo bolt, which I'll have an O-ring uh, and a washer for it when I actually come to install it on the car. And we've got a couple of nice new shiny core plugs for where the cam gears go. So they only cost a couple of quid from BMW. There's a part number if you want it. Where is it? This one here. The ones I had from the car had really nasty aluminium washers, so we'll just use them for now. Nice and clean, fresh ones. There you go. That is your Vanos rebuilt. One Vanos unit, a la new piston. Nice and tight. Absolutely no play. A little bit of friction on the turn. Pretty happy with that. That's a nice job, well done. That's going to go on the stroker build. I'm going to wrap it up in cotton wool now and keep it for another couple of weeks until we're ready to go. Sweet.